This is a demonstration of the interaction resampler. So in this case, again, we're looking at our snake experiment. So again, we have eight subjects in each of these two factors of fear. So we might have eight subjects who report a high level of fear for snakes and eight subjects who report a low level of fear for snakes. And for each subject in both of those two levels, we expose them to both a snake background condition and a neutral condition with the hypothesis that a snake background should introduce more interference regardless of whether you're high fear or low fear subject and it should be particularly pronounced for the high fear subjects. Alright, so what we need to do here is we take our raw scores for each of these four columns Right? So each level of our within subject factor cross with each level of our between subject factor. It's a two by two design, so we have four columns total. And we'll be placing those in the appropriate combination of cells in this interaction resampler. So let's say that factor A is our within subject factor. And we're going to call that, let's say, condition. And for this, they have the uh, snake background for one level, and for the other, they have a neutral background of animals like bunnies or cows or elephants or whatever. Alright, so factor B, we're going to have that be our between subject factor, so make sure that this radio button is selected for between. And we are going to call this the fear factor. So there are the subjects with a high level of reported fear for snakes and the subjects with a low level of fear for snakes. So all you need to do now is transfer these reaction times into the appropriate cell. So remember, this is the high fear subjects crossed with the snake background within subject level. So copy those and then look over here. Where's my high fear uh, between subject level? That's right here. And where's the snake background within subject factor? It's right here. Okay, so just copy and paste those. And again, the same thing for the high fear subjects in the neutral condition. So high fear is in this column and neutral is in this column. So we just match those up and paste the reaction times. Same thing for low fear subjects within the snake background condition and same logic for low fear subjects in the neutral condition. So now we have all of those. Oh, and before we go any further, I recall we have all these averages in this Excel template that's provided online. And what you can do is insert a line chart. Right, so this is what our line chart looks like. And just looking at this, which is just a plot of the, the means, you might say, yeah, it looks like there's an interaction going on. There's no difference in reaction time between high fear and low fear individuals in the neutral condition, but there is a wide difference in the snake background condition. So. We're going to use this resampler to see whether that confirms our hypothesis just by eyeballing the data. So make sure research mode is checked and you can just click plot your data. So in this case, we can see that the blue line again, which represents zero, falls within the 95% confidence interval represented by this gray box, suggesting that there is no significant interaction effect. Now, if you look more closely at one of these resamples in this pane up here, you can see why that's the case. You see that for the means of these lines, so the endpoints represent the mean of all these, say, red squares here, which are the snake background high fear condition, there's a lot of variance around that mean. And there's also a lot of variance around the mean for people who are self-reported high fear subjects and in the neutral condition. Okay. Likewise for participants who are in the snake background condition but low fear and who are in the neutral condition but also low fear. Okay. So there's so much variance around these means that it's really difficult to say that there's actually an interaction going on. If these dots were more tightly clustered around each of these means, around the ends of these lines, then it would be more likely that we'd find a significant interaction effect. So that's how you do the interaction resampler. I hope it's helpful, and now you have all the tools you need to write up your next paper.